Hey YouTube, this is Crosh1990, and today I have my first video for the Shadow Era card game. I don't really remember when this released. It says 2013 on this card, and um, yeah, I never played it when it came out, obviously. I saw it randomly on YouTube. It just like popped up on my feed, kind of looked into it, thought the game was interesting. I liked how it had a digital game as well which is no longer supported but i think you can still play it but it's just like the missions won't continue and there's kind of nothing else there you can just solo the missions kind of just play the game and in the app there's like three or four other sets that never got physical printings which really sucks especially for this deck because two of those sets have two allies that are really really good in this deck there's one that searches for like an attachment puts it into your hand, and then there's another one that gets you a dead uh, ally back, and they're both synergistic with the Wolven kind of class or theme or whatever. But as for just the physical card game aspect, um, there's there's two sets, and there's plenty here to build pretty like decent non-starter deck feeling decks that have some good, good interactions, good amount of depth. And yeah, I wanted to start things off with my favorite of the decks, which is the uh, the Wolven. The, so I have a, two decks. I have a Shadow deck and I have a, a Human deck, so like the bad and the good, and they both do similar things. I'll be covering this deck in another, another video. So, man, the foil is really picking up on my camera right here. It's kind of cool. So uh, this deck, Dark Law, down here is the health. Down here is the cost to use the shadow ability. You gain like shadow energy one every turn. So three, it takes three turns to kind of get this going. And in this game, it the tempo of the game really kicks in around turn like three to four. It's And after that, it, it can get kind of crazy. And that's where the game really progresses fast. And things either go really well for you or they're going to go downhill for you very, very quickly. And yeah, this guy, he's, he's not about allies and play he's all about himself the things that he puts on himself mainly the equipment that we have ideally jeweler's dream this is one of the best cards in the, the game i think i would be running four of them if i had four of them but i don't so i'm supplementing with two cards that you know i'll go into that a little bit later his shadow ability says until the start of your next turn so this works even on your opponent's turn weapons you control have plus two attack and dark claw gains ambush which means you the opponent can't defend his attack so wherever he's attacking it's going to attack it in this game you can like kind of block and protect for things this makes it where you can't the opponent can't do that and yeah plus two attack on a weapon is really good because weapons don't have a whole lot of attack in this game so putting something up to three is pretty good that can kill a lot of allies and stuff in this game so that is what he does that is all he cares about we'll put him up here where he's nice and shiny and now we'll go over the, the the weapons we equip to him. Again, I, I would just have four Jeweler's Dream if I owned four, but I do not. Out of two boxes, I think I bought two boxes of this set. I only got two, one of them being foil. So this is a kind of a hard card to open. So I'll, I'll go over this one in a minute. So up here, that's the cost. These are the two classes it belongs to. This is its strength, like I said. These things don't really have a whole lot of whole lot of attack. This down here is the durability. This is how many times it's used for attacking and defending. If they attack him, he strikes back. That's going to reduce this as well. So these Jeweler Dreams, they break pretty fast. And it says whenever your hero attacks while it's in play, uh, two used resources are renewed, which means you untap two of your lands every time you attack. In this deck, we attack with him more than once. So this card's essentially free in this deck, which is kind of insane. And it works on curve with the rest of the stuff we have in our deck. So yeah, Jeweler's Dream is insane. I would highly recommend playing them if you are playing Dark Claw. There's another Wolven hero that uh, he buffs his allies and stuff. I, I like this one a lot more. And Jeweler's Dream is insane. And then just to kind of round out the rest of the equipment that we have, there's some other options. I just chose this. It's on the cheaper side. Only one attack, but it has no durability, so it doesn't break. So this is a good backup plan for you when your jeweler's dreams do break or if you don't draw into them. He can you know, always make this go to three attack. So there's still some longevity and some use there. And now the other cards we attach to him. Here is our armor. 
It's a four cost, four durability. So it's weird how they swap the durabilities around, but yeah, four durability and it absorbs one damage whenever he's dealt damage, which is, you know, pretty decent. And it says whenever a friendly ally is killed while Wrath of the Forest is in play, draw a card. Um, yeah, this card's insane. I uh, Drawing cards in this game is so important. It's, it's important in all games, right? But in this game, it's kind of like the WoW TCG where you're putting cards from your hand face down as resources. So everything can be a resource. I did not realize that. <laughs> I didn't realize that deck is in the camera. But um, point being, you shred through your hand insanely fast in this game. So being able to draw cards in any way that you can is, is great because there's not a whole lot of card draw in this game. In fact, this deck is playing a lot of it. This being one of them, especially when it's card draw that's giving you cards when you don't have to pay for it later on. Yeah, it's 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 pretty good. And then finally, last card we attach to our hero, and I am running for them for a reason, because we need to see this card as soon as possible. Um, it's it's speed strike. It's what makes Dark Claw actually viable and playable. You attach it to him, and your hero can attack two times on your turn while it's attached. So being able to double attack instead of just attack once and then calling it good, especially when you have a Jeweler's Dream up, especially when you pay for the ability. Uh, yeah, being able to, you know, tap four, play Jeweler's Dream, use the ability, attack for three, untap two, attack for three, untap two again, to just play like a Wrath of the Forest or play a bunch of allies, that's insane. And doing all of that, you know, on turn four, yeah, it's it's pretty nuts. So this card is an absolute four of, an absolute must four of. Any additional copies you have afterwards can always just be used as resources anyway. And then probably the next best card in this deck, as far as not for Dark Claw, but just like generically good for the faction, is Blood Moon. Yeah, Blood Moon's great. It's a two cost. It's got cool artwork. I, I like Blood Moon. There's a when I played Magic back in the day, I, Blood Moon was one of my all time favorite cards. And um. It's a support, so you just play it. Your back row, it just sits there and it's doing its thing. Duration three, so it stays out for three turns. And when you end your turn while your hero doesn't have stealth, you draw a card. He can never have stealth. I think the other hero can gain stealth or do stuff with stealth. I, I can't really remember off the top of my head, so that might be why that little caveat is here. But uh, being able to just draw a card for free... For three turns, uh, yeah, this this card is an auto slam four of as well. Now for the rest of the deck, it's all of the abilities and non... I have like these cool shadow, foily shadow era sleeves too. The rest of the deck is all of our non-creature, non-attachment support cards. It, ideally, it's mostly all removal, except for those three cards which I'll put in the back. So, Capture Prey, we run four of these. Basically, you attach it to anything, uh, non-hero, just any ally, and that ally is disabled, which means it can't attack, defend, or use abilities. So it's basically just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So if there's something, generally something that costs three or more, you're going to attach this to it, and it's just kind of eliminating that threat. reason why I say three or more is because we're running four of Now You're Mine. Two cost, woven ability, and yeah, target opposing ally would cost three or less is killed. Just good removal um, that will pretty much kill most of the problematic things in this game because this is a pretty fast paced game so most allies are going to be around two to three where like the late game bombs four to six but ideally you're wanting to keep things on the cheaper end and finishing things off we have more card draw with a uh, bad santa and it says like merry christmas down here it's cool uh full art one this is kind of a, a rare card as well not as rare as jeweler's dream from what i noticed but yeah, it's a neutral ability, so anyone can play it, and it just says each player draws three cards. So it sucks that you're giving your opponent card draw, but at the end of the day, you don't really care because you're just going to be bloodying the crap out of them with Dark Claw anyway. Next is the rest of the allies. In my online build, I don't run any of these, <laughs> and I don't even run this guy. I have just the utility woven stuff. We don't have them in the physical card game. Therefore, I'm kind of flushing out the deck with some late game bombs instead. And uh, Howl Thing, Terror of the Veil, is quite awesome. Five attack, five health, that, that's a lot. Other friendly woven allies have plus one attack on your turn. And when he's summoned, you may summon a woven ally from your hand that costs three or less. 
for free. So either this dude or this dude. Yeah, this guy's great. Um, again, he's he's really expensive at six, but you know, once you get to six, you can just stop playing resources and just start saving your utility cards for your card plays and stuff. But yeah, he's pretty cool if you ever see him. And then uh, run two, Karyos Doombringer. Um, outside of having sweet art, he has a lot of health, which is really good. Four attack is all right. He has a step fast, and when your hero is attacked by a hero or ally, Karyos attacks that hero or ally at the end of combat if able. That is really, really good and really annoying. <laughs> Just every time they attack anything of yours, he's going to attack him. So it forces your opponent to attack into him first to kill him. And he's really hard to kill. Next run, two copies of Olgoth the Glutton. Also has really cool artwork. These things are like about to get eaten. Uh, three attack, which is pretty bad. Like for a big six cost. You want something that's a hardier attack, but his abilities make up for it. Six health is really good. And it says whenever an ally is killed, he gains plus one base attack and plus one health. So every time something dies, he continually gets bigger and bigger. And if you have a three shadow energy... Target other ally with cost less than his current attack is killed. So, yeah, being able to just kind of kill anything of play, pretty dang good. It's now to round off the rest of the deck, we have our cheaper allies. Play four, Bad Wolf. We got this cool promo foil one, though I like how the artwork is inverted <laughs> for some reason. But a three cost, four health, three attack, which is pretty decent for a three cost. And it heals one damage at the start of each of its controller's turns. So it's a little harder to kill. Then finally, to round out the deck, we have four Pack Wolf. Again, we got this really foil promo. That thing is just like, my camera's having a hard time keeping up with it. But yeah, two cost, two attack, three health, which is kind of cool. And it gets one attack for every Pack Wolf in play. Or every other, so it doesn't buff itself, obviously. The more of them you have, the bigger that they are. So anyway, that is the deck tech for this deck. Again, the allies are not the main focus of the deck, and it's not where this deck shines. It is all about making Dark Claw really big with your equipment, and then just attacking the hell out of your either your opponent or, you know, double attacking with a, a three power card can uh that's two allies that are dead, or if your allies are dying, you know. Which they, they kind of do because they're on the somewhat weaker side. They're going to be drawing new cards with this. And this gives you a little more longevity. And it's just, it's insane. This, this deck is really good. I think in the the online app when this was like really going, uh, Dark Claw was one of the more top tier competitive decks. And it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Plus to attack on a Jeweler's Dream. Again, the fact that this is in the Wolven faction doesn't really make much sense to me. Because it doesn't look anything like this. But pumping this up to three, untapping four lands with, you know, this right here, it's it's nuts. This deck, it it can just blow your opponent out of the water completely. And, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it on the app. I have a lot of fun with it in the physical form as well. And, yeah, it's my favorite deck just for theme and everything else. So, anyway, that's the uh, deck tech. I'll have a deck list for this deck in the description down below. And uh, yeah, keep uh, liking and commenting. And for new people, uh, subscribe. That'd be cool. I, I like talking with all of you. And as always, I'll catch you all later. See ya.